turn the heat up a little bit more. We're going to hang out in the kitchen of uh, Fat, which is owned by Robin Ma'i. Robin is a 92 grad, also a Kuno. Red! Red, red, red! Last turn, Mark! And so I wanted to talk to you a little bit about you know, the different processes of caramelization, which is, as we all know, is related to sugars and the Maillard reaction, which is related to amino acids and compounds and such. One oftentimes gets mixed up with the other. So we just wanted to show a few different variations as well. The sugar has been cooking right now for about four or five minutes. And as if you can look closely, you'll notice that it's actually starting to uh, get a little color to it. Okay? And one thing as cooks that we learn is you don't wanna, you don't wanna shake it around too much because what happens is that Sugar crystals on the edges will form. It'll crystallize, and then you then you messed up. You gotta start over. So this this right here is the Maillard reaction. Maillard was named after a French scientist who discovered that when amino acids and particular protein compounds come into contact with heat, they change color. Not only do they change color, but it creates amazing and delicious flavors along the way. How do you utilize like? onions and caramel like that in your kitchen? So we have caramelized onions on the menu for our burger. It's been on the menu since day one and so you want a little bit of sweetness on the burger. So that's what we do. My question though is this, is, is from what I understand but I want to hear from you as well. You know when you cut into an onion it tastes savory, right? It's, yes. it's hot, yes. it's uh, you know, I mean Maui onion okay is sweet but it's like spicy, it goes up your nose. Right. Sweet is not the first thing that comes to mind. Right. So why is it sweet now? Because there's starch, there's like natural starch in the vegetables, in the onion, and when you cook it down, it transforms into it caramelizes, transforms it and brings out the caramelization of the sugars, the natural sugars in the starch. Got it. Safe, it's super soft, super sweet. So there's no char on this. You gotta go slow, slow and low. Oh yeah. No, no hacking. No I, don't hacking. Have, I don't have a fast way. That's right. No fast way. Because good food takes time, baby. But this is in caramelization. Contrary to popular belief, right? This is my art. My art is for, for proteins. And then, is it true that like my art reaction is when heat combines with like amino acids and those protein compounds and things like that, yes. right? Yes. It made me think about caramel. Have you ever, have you ever put caramel into any restrooms? Yes, we have a salted caramel ice cream. Like when something is chilled, it actually the flavors are harder to detect on the, in your olfactory. Got it. Right. So if something is cold, you actually need to go stronger. You need more sugar. You need more salt. You need more caramelization. Got it. So when we make the caramelized ice cream, I have to stand by the cooks and go longer, wait longer, longer, because they want to take it off. Like they want to, yeah, I can they see that. They want to take it off. Yeah, because you, you're you afraid to get them on it. Yeah. To me, let me know what you think. To me, the dish composition is that the sugar, the sugar sort of helps to balance that, that meatiness, the grassiness of the beef. The grassiness of the beef complements the grassiness of the arugula, except this has spice in it, yeah. which brings like another layer of flavor. Yes. And the fat, What's nice too is the residual fat of the ribeye. It goes like nice with the spiciness of the green got stew. It, got so it, got it. It's like all comes together. Yeah, I love it. Thanks. I mean, this is like very classic pairing. 